Amen. Thank you very much. Welcome. Welcome once again. This is your host, Prophetess Dr. Christine Sigi. Welcome you. I am going to talk to you. The subject is called Deliverance, Prayer to Disappoint and Disgrace the Enemies. Disappoint and Disgrace the Enemies. Deliverance prayer to disappoint and disgrace the enemies. You must let your enemy be disappointed and disgraced in the name of Jesus. Wherever the enemy is planning against you, let them be disappointed and disgraced in Jesus' name. Whether you like it or not, there are some powers of darkness that, 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 that are assigned against your life. As the, the powers of this the, the powers of darkness, they are waiting to manifest in your life. I pray that let them be disappointed. It they will not manifest. I destroy them. I bind them and I render them powerless in Jesus' name. When the devil is watching and looking to, to, of his activities to manifest, let them be disappointed in Jesus' name. And the plans of the enemy against your life and your children, let them be disappointed and disgraced in Jesus' name. We are going to look in the scripture from the book of Exodus 15, verse 9. The book of Exodus 15, verse 9. The Bible says, The enemy said, This is what the Bible says, The enemy said, I would pursue, I would overtake, I will divide the spoil. My last shall be satisfied upon them. I will draw my sword. My hand shall destroy them. This is what the enemy is saying. The enemy is saying, look at, the, look at that, what the enemy is saying about you. That is why everything what the enemy is saying shall be disappointed and disgraced in Jesus' name. The enemy said, Look at your Bible. The enemy said, I will pursue. The enemy said that I will pursue. The enemy said, I will overtake. That's what the enemy, let the enemy, what the enemy is saying that he wants to pursue you, let him be disappointed and disgraced in the name of Jesus. Everything the enemy is saying about you, I pray that let the enemy be dis disappointed and disgraced, disgraced. This is whereby, this Exodus 15 verse 9, that is where many people are being, in, in, being attacked from. When the enemy said, I am going to, to, to pursue you, I'm going to pursue your husband, I'm going to pursue your wife, I'm going to pursue your children, I'm going to pursue your business, I'm going to pursue your, your job, I'm going to pursue everything you are doing, your business, and I will overtake, I will overtake them. When the enemy said he's going to pursue and overtake, which means he's coming to over, overtake you. That's what that you are facing problem you are facing now. Because the enemy has said, if there was no enemy, then we could not even do the prayers. Yeah, anything you are doing, the enemy is watching and said, I am going to pursue and overtake. Look at that. The, the, the enemy says, I will divide the spoil. The spoil. The spoil means destroy. Yeah? Yes. My God. I just want to thank you. The enemy says, the enemy says, I would divide the spoil. The spoil, spoil means I would destroy. I would divide your spoil and destroy them. My last shall be satisfied upon them. You know, last. The enemy says, my last, that he will search, last means sex. The, 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 the enemy says, I will sex you. I will use you like a, like a prostitute. Yeah? Do you know some people, if they are possessed in a place like men, if a man is a boss in somewhere and is hiring a job, do you know that some, some of them, they use women, they are last. Even bosses at your workplace, if you need a promotion or you need something, do you know that they will use you as a last, last sex or last? 
That's what the enemy says. And many people, especially women, they suffer in this area. Some bosses, they want to sleep with them so that they can get promotion or a job. I have so many cases. They don't care whether you are married or you are not married. That is, that, that is what the enemy says. That last shall be satisfied upon them. That the, the enemy, my last, he said, my last shall be satisfied upon them. His desire, his last, his sexual desire will be satisfied among, you know, that, that the wicked, the enemy, they have no respect. Yeah? Either if you are a man, you are a woman, the last man is a last man. The gay men, they don't have respect of anybody. This is what the enemy is saying. But let, the, let your enemies be disgraced and be disappointed. And the enemy says, I will throw my sword. That he's going to throw his sword and he will cut you. My hand shall destroy them. The enemy says, his hand, that the hand will destroy. And how many enemy, enemy has destroyed so many people. That's what they say. Because the enemy is saying, therefore, I pray that everything the enemy is saying about you, let them be disappointed. Let the enemy be disappointed and disgraced in Jesus' name. What they are, the enemy is saying about you, it is the time is up. Let them be disappointed and disgraced. Let, that's why when David, King David, when King David, the Bible says, King David was a man of after God's heart. When King David watched and see how the enemy is planning and what the enemy is saying. That's why we need to fight like David fight. That's why we need to pray like David prayed. That's why we need to do deliverance prayer like David did. Because the enemy has said, I will pursue you. I will overtake you. I will divide the spoil. My last shall be satisfied upon them. I will throw my sword and my hand shall destroy them. Because the enemy has said, and then we have to follow deliverance prayers. We have to follow spiritual warfare prayer. That's when we can defeat these enemies. David was a man after God's heart. He was a man with the prophetic anointing. David was a man with the, with the, with the prophetic anointing. When, when, when God was using Moses, Moses, Moses prayed. This is Moses. This is the book of Moses. When Moses, Moses prayed, he said, let my enemy be scattered. Let the enemy of God be scattered. Let God arise and let his enemy be scattered. When the enemy is saying like this, he's saying that I will pursue, you pray this prayer, let my enemy be scattered. Let God arise and let the enemy be scattered. Then we look at the uh, uh, at David. David was anointed, prophetic anointed. He prophetically pronounced against the enemy. You have to prophetically announce. You have to pro prophetically speak against the enemy. When the enemy is declaring a war against you, what are you going to do? He has said he wants to destroy you. He wants to, to satisfy his rust. To your life he wants to kill you he wants to destroy you he has taken everything from you you have nothing you have to know how to prophesy against the enemy you know how to speak the word of god against your enemies he uh, as as we as i'm talking examples of david because we are going to deal a lot of prayer from the books of some psalms the book of psalms how David handled the enemies. How David deal with the with his enemies. So we need to follow the way David prayed. Spiritual warfare prayer. David, David, he was a man with the prophetic anointing. Kingly and a warrior anointing. He was the man with the worship anointing. Priestly anointed and the deliverance anointed david understood warfare and he fought spiritual enemies david understood spiritual warfare and they fought spiritual enemies 
We should know how to fight spiritual enemies. Like David fought spiritual enemies. There are spiritual enemies who have said, like what Moses is saying. They are saying, I'm going to pursue you and overtake you and destroy you. And destroy you. That's what the enemy is saying. But you should know how to fight spiritual enemies. They are demonic and spiritual enemies. That needs a very high, high level of spiritual warfare prayer. That you will meet them. You know how David dealt with the Goliath, the Philistine. He subject all his enemies to shame. David is made the Goliath be disgraced and be ashamed. Those people were depending on him. You know, when he was 40 days standing in front of the children of Israel, cursing them, cursing them, saying like this, I will pursue you, overtake you, and do all these sources of cousins. David looked at him and said, Who is this? What is this man talking about? What is he? Yeah? You will look at your enemy and say, What are you talking? You want to pursue me? You want to overtake me? You want to spoil me? You want to last your last? You, it's not me. David never lost any battle. It is therefore beneficial focus to pick up lessons from his, from David. Yes, from his prayers. We need to take lessons from, from his prayers. Because when David looked at the Goliath, he, he knew that this man is not the ordinary person. But because he's not the ordinary person, I will go in a spiritual world, in a spiritual way. I will go with my God that I serve. Every problem you are facing, every trouble you are facing, we, you need to go in a spiritual way. Don't, don't fight yourself. Getting angry, worried. You start to worry. You get really angry. You've been sad. Because what the enemy is doing to you. The good news is there is answer. There is a way out. You should learn how to deal with spiritual warfare. You should know how to deal with the spiritual enemies. You can be married. Physical marriage. But in a spiritual realm. The enemy has taken your marriage. You have no marriage. You have no husband. You can be married with a woman. In the physical, but spiritual, in the spiritual world, your wife is not there. Yes, they have taken them. So you just struggle because the enemy has taken your husband, has taken your wife. The enemy has taken your children. The enemy has taken, has taken, these things I've repeated and I'm repeating all the time. So that the people, the new people can understand what I'm talking. I welcome the new people. This is spiritual warfare prayers. So I, 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 I'm talking about spiritual warfare. You can be married in a physical, in a physical way. You celebrate, you are happy that you are married. You get a husband, you get a wife. But in a spiritual realm, you are not married. Your husband has been taken. So you just, you have no husband. As time goes, it will prove to you that you are not married. Because the Bible says that there will be no sander. Now the sander has come. Who is a liar? That's why you need to, to know how to fight spiritual warfare. You can get a job, a good job. You are getting money, but you are not you are you don't know. You don't you have nothing. You don't know how your money goes, you don't know how you spend your money, you are always in debt. You get you are you are getting good money, but you are always dead. All the loans take your money, everything goes. You remain like you are not working. You remain in poverty, you remain poor. Yeah? You start worrying, you start getting angry, you start thinking. But because the job you got, the, the enemy has taken. Look at what the enemy has said. I will pursue, I will take. So when the, when you learn how to fight spiritual warfare. Prayer. 
like David. That's why I'm saying that we are going to run his, his lessons from his prayers. When David prayed in Psalms 35 verse 4, David prayed these prayers. He prayed like this, let them be put to a shame and dishonor who seek, who seek, who seek, who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed. Who devise evil against me? When the enemy said that I would pursue you, I would overtake you. You have to prophetically speak against them. You have to say, let them be disappointed and be put to shame in Jesus' name. That is Psalms 35 verse 4. The book of Psalms 35 verse 4. David prayed like that. The David, a man after God's heart, he prayed like that. So you don't have to pray good prayers to your enemies. Since the enemy have said, he has said that he wants to destroy you. He wants to destroy you. He wants to take, he wants to take everything from you. He wants to pursue you. You don't have to wait until the enemy pursue you and overtake you. You have to, to prophetically Pray the prayer of, of, of that will stop him from, from manifested. The prayer that will put him a stop. Because he is waiting to see what is going to happen to you. Or to your children, to your family. When you pray these prayers, Psalms 35 verse 4, you pray like this. Let them put to shame, dishonor, who seek, who seek after my life. Let them be turned back and disappointed who devise evil against me. When the enemy devise evil against you, he advise, advise evil against your work, against your life, let them be disappointed in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look in another scripture from the book of Psalms 35 verse 6. Psalms 35 verse 26. The book of Psalms 35, verse 26. Don't get tired. I need hearts. Give me more hearts. I know when we are praying these prayers, the prayer of David. Remember, David was a man is of after God's heart. And he could pray like this. Don't be cheated. Don't be lied. Jesus Christ, the son of the living God, he came to destroy the works of the devil. Jesus never used any good words in his ministry. So me with the words Jesus uses. If Jesus called people robbers, thieves, vampires, Satan, Jesus never called Jesus never used any good words. Look at Psalms 35, verse 26. The Bible says, Let them be put to shame and disappointed. All together who rejoice at my calamity. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor who magnify themselves against me. Yes, you, you have to reverse everything the enemy is saying against you. David says, let them be put to shame and disappointed all together who rejoice at my calamity. My, my calamity. You know the devil is rejoicing when he fix you and you lose you know, when you lose your husband, when you, you, your marriage is break up, do you know how many demons are celebrating about that? You pray that let them be disappointed and be shame and, and be clothed and be, and, be, and be clothed with shame and dishonor. Who magnify themselves against me? That's what David was praying. That's why our prayers, me, me, because the enemy has said, that I will pursue you. I will overtake you. Yeah. Let them wherever who have said that is going to pursue you. Is going to destroy you. Let them be clothed with shame. Let them be dis disappointed. Every word of the mouth of the enemy. Wherever they are planning in a spiritual way. Let them be clothed with shame and dishonor. In the name of Jesus Christ. That's the prayer. That's how we do the prayers. When you pray such a prayers. The enemy will be defeated because it will, it will not manifest, manifest. In Psalms 6, verse 10, Psalms 6, verse 10, the book of Psalms 
6 verse 10, the Bible says, All of my enemy shall be ashamed and greatly troubled. They shall turn back and to put to shame in a moment. David prayed, let your enemies, let your enemies to be shame. You know, there's a, a language, there's English I hear people say, even me, I used to say that before I discover it is wrong. You say, shame on you, shame on you. Don't let a person say shame on you. Don't let the person say shame on you. Say, no, 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 it, I'm not, I, it, that is wrong. This language, they, they are saying shame on you, shame on you, so, shame on me. Don't, don't let it do, 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 do be shame on you. Let your enemy be ashamed because the enemy has planned evil against your life. The enemy have said so evil, bad things. Let them be ashamed and let trouble fall upon them and be ashamed in a moment. Whenever they are planning, let them, you know, when they are ashamed, they cannot, they can't, they can't go and, and, and do to, to other person. That's why they will run away, they leave you. Because wherever they try you, they, they, they get rejected and dishonor and shame. That's why you need these prayers so that your enemy can be dis, dis, disgraced and be put to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. You pray that, let all of my enemies, you, when you wake up in the morning or any time you go to your prayer, just remember to pray that Psalm 6, six verse 10. Say, all of my enemies shall be ashamed wherever they are planning against me. They are planning against my children. They are planning me to fail. Let them be put to a shame in Jesus' name. Let my enemies be to put to a shame in Jesus' name. You know, the wicked people are so wicked. There are some wicked powers that they expect you to put you to a shame. But you pray the prayer of David prayed that all of my enemies shall be ashamed and greatly trouble. They shall turn back and put to shame in a moment. That's the prayer point. Gun, prayer gun point. The prayer gun point. That, that you pray like that. Because the enemy have said. The enemy have said. What the enemy has said. Let them be put to shame in a moment. Wherever they are thinking about you. Let them be put to shame. Because anything they are planning against you, it is not going to work. Jesus Christ has destroyed them. Therefore, let the word of Jesus become true. And let the enemy be, the, be, be a liar and be ashamed in Jesus' name. Don't let the enemy be ashamed you. Don't let the enemy disgrace you. The Bible says, he who believes in the scripture will never be put to shame. If you believe in the scripture, you will never be put to shame. But look at shame. How many people are being put in shame? The enemy is putting you shame. Because of that, now we reverse it. We reverse every shame, every disgrace. Shame. That's why you see sometimes sleep when you, you, get, you, you dream that you are naked. That's what the enemy is coming to disgrace you, to, to put shame on you. Let that shame go back to the, to the to enemies. Let every enemies who are gossiping against you, who are standing, planning evil against you, let them be put to, sh to shame in the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look in the, in the book of uh, Psalms 59 verse 11. Psalms 59 verse 11. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord. Stain them not, lest my people forget, scatter them by the power and bring them down, O oh Lord, my shelter. You see, Lord God, David is telling God to scatter them and bring them down. Your enemy will be disappointed and disgraced in the name of Jesus. Let your enemies go down in the name of Jesus Christ. You have been suffered so much. You have been attacked. You have no, you don't, you are not happy. You suffer, you, when you are alone, you, you, you cry. You, you don't feel like you are a person, you are a woman, you are a human being. The enemy has disgraced you, the enemy has put you to shame. Yeah? Has taken everything from you. People are laughing at you because the enemy has disgraced you. The enemy has put you shame. People, you look like a, a fool. Yeah? 
Even you, you, tell, you, you, you tell yourself, I'm a fool, I'm stupid, I don't know what I'm doing. That is not you. That's the devil, the devil, the enemy. Not you. The enemy is the one that has to be foolish or be a fool. Not you. The enemy has made you to be crying, to, to, be, to, to, to miss everything, to lose everything you, have no, you, have no, you don't love. It, uh, he has disgraced you. He has taken everything you have. He has taken hope. You have no hope. You have no peace. Let them become down. Let, let, let God bring them down in Jesus' name. Wherever is fighting you, wherever your enemy that is fighting you, the Lord will bring them down in Jesus' name. Anything that is working against you is from the kingdom of darkness. Let, them, let God bring them down in Jesus' name. In the book of Psalms, 59 verse 12 verse 12 the bible says for the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips let them even be taken into their own pride and for cursing and laying which they speak that's why we pray let let it let let it them go to the to the back to the sender the word say david understood spiritual warfare understood spiritual enemies that's why he, he was praying like that he didn't know who is the enemy but he has pray pro protection prayer of protection because he was pursued by the enemies yes my sister thank you for joining this is the prayer of david a man after god his own heart he prayed such a prayers he said for the sin of their mouth and the words of their ribs, let them even be taken in their own pride. Their sin of their mouth and their words of their lips, let them even be taken in their own pride. Let everything they are, they are doing to be taken to, to their own pride. And for the cursing and lying which they are speaking. Because they are so bright, because they, they, they have sins. The sins, the words they are pronounced, the words they are talking against you. When the witchcraft standing midnight, chanting and speaking and cursing you and all the night up to morning. Now, everything they have done against you, let them turn to their pride. Let them turn to their pride. Let them turn to their own heart. Let them to turn to their families. Let them return to their own in the name of Jesus Christ. Those, those are wicked. They are so wicked. Their mouth is full of wicked words. Their lips is cursing. They can't say good things. They are using cursing. They curse you. They call your name in a, in a, in a mirror. When they call, they watch the mirror and they call your name there. They watch you. They monitor you. Now they are using cell phone. A witch was telling me, a cult person, he got saved and he was telling me how they, how they monitor people. They use cell phone and they, after using their cell phone, they see you, they monitor you wherever you are. Anything you are doing, they see you. And then they start chanting and, and, and stop your ways. But when you pray such a prayers, they feel fire. They, he was telling me that... The prayer of a Christian, such a prayer, spiritual warfare prayer, they don't like it. That's why they will fight people until they stop their prayers. When you do this spiritual warfare prayers, those occult people, Satanist witchcraft, they don't like this spiritual warfare. They said that they feel fire and they see fire and they feel very hot. So they had to go away from, you, from attacking you. Now that's why you need to, to, to run out to do this spiritual warfare prayer. That's why David never lost any battle. David was winning. He never, he was never defeated. David was winning all the time because he understood how to fight the spiritual warfare prayer, how to do spiritual warfare prayer. It, it needs revelation to understand this. Pastors can be against it with these prayers. They will say that Jesus Christ, he, he said to pray for your enemy to pray and love them. 
and you don't need this prayer. This prayer is, is witchcraft, is a killer. That's not true. That's not true. Jesus is himself, he came to destroy the works of the enemy. Who is the enemy? The works of the devil. Who is the devil? Who is the devil? So you cannot pray for the devil who, who, is, who, who has said he wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. You cannot pray for such enemies. Enemies who knows what he's doing, you cannot pray for them. That's a lie. So wherever the pastors are criticizing the prayers and saying that these prayers are witchcraft prayers, I am sorry for them. They need the deliverance. Your pastor needs the deliverance. Because this is the prayer of victory. This is the spiritual warfare prayer that you need to talk to your enemies. The enemies, full of the sin of their mouth and the words of their lips, let them even be taken in their bride and for the cursing and lying which they speak. You know they lie. They, they put lies a lot. Do you know some people even they are in jail because of lying? Somebody just lied on them. They just lied. Even some people are being fired because of a lie. Yeah? Then you say that you will watch the enemy taking your job. You will pray fire precate prayer. Like what David was praying. David was praying verse 13. Let's, Psalms 59 verse 13. David prayed, consume them in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God ruled in Jacob unto the ends of the earth. Sarah. So David says, consume them with the fire. Because God is a God of fire. It's a consuming fire. Now David says, consume them. Consume my enemies. Enemies who want to pursue you. Who wants to overtake you. He has said that he will, he will destroy you. Let God consume them. Let God of Elijah consume them. Let the fire of God consume them. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. The enemy have said that he, he wants to destroy you. He wants to kill you. He wants to take your children. And then you what? You pray. Let you pray the prayer that let the enemy be consumed by the fire of God in Jesus' name. Even when you, you dream very bad dreams, use the fire of God. Say, you the dreams that came to me while I was sleeping. Receive fire of God. Be consumed with the fire of God. Be destroyed and burned to ashes in Jesus' name. That's how you can pray. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. Yes, let God arise and let his enemy be scattered. That's the prayer that you can pray against your enemies. I pray that God Almighty, I know people, they don't like these prayers because they think that this is bad prayers, this is witchcraft prayers. This is not witchcraft prayers. David was not a witch. David was a man after God's heart. And he could pray such a prayer. Yes? That's why you need to know how to do spiritual warfare prayer. Consume them in, in, in wrath. Consume them that they may not be. And let them know that God rule it. God rule it. Rule. Let them know that God rule it. Let the enemy know that there is God in heaven. Let the enemy know there is a living God in heaven. Let the enemy know that there is Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God. Let 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 the enemy know that the blood of Jesus is still alive and it works. Let them be consumed by the blood of Jesus. Let the blood of Jesus consume them. Let the power in the blood of Jesus destroy them. In the name of Jesus Christ. The enemy that wants to destroy your life has, has damaged you so much. The enemy has damaged you so much. Let them be consumed by fire, by thunder, by lightning in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus Christ. Let's look in the book of Deuteronomy 28, 8, verse 44. The book of Deuteronomy, verse 47 and 48. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. The book of Deuteronomy 28, verse 47 to 48. The Bible says, Because you did not serve the Lord your God with joyfulness and the gladness of heart, because of the abundance of all this, therefore you shall serve your enemies, whom the Lord will send against you in anger 
and a thirst in nakedness and lacking everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until, uh, until he has destroyed you. Yes? Because people have refused to serve the Lord. The enemy does not serve the Lord. The enemy has refused to serve the Lord. The devil has refused to serve the Lord. Wicked people have received to serve the Lord. Therefore, God is saying, is telling Moses, now because of what they, they have decided that they don't want to serve the Lord with their joyfulness and with their gladness, because of this, the Lord will put, put a yoke of iron on their necks until he has destroyed them. Because there is power. You cannot fight God. You cannot fight the child of God. The God of himself will put a yoke of iron. You know the yoke of iron? You know iron how it is? When the Lord will put a yoke of iron in the neck of your enemies, the enemy will be destroyed. They cannot do anything because this is what the enemy is using. They put a yoke on you. That's why the Bible says in Isaiah 10 verse 27, the Lord will break the yoke. The anointing will break the yoke. So the children of, of God, the devil has taken the iron, iron yoke and yoke you. So you are, you, you are yoked. You, you are yoked and you are destroyed. You are destroyed. You are suffering. You are crying. You are having troubles because of the yoke of the enemies. Now God is reversing. Disappoint them and shame them. God himself will take the iron, 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 iron yoke and yoke them that they will, and, until they are destroyed. Then God himself will destroy your enemies. You don't have to worry once you give him permission. He, he has said, he has swore that I will destroy them. Not the enemy to destroy you. Because the enemy has said, he, he will pursue you and destroy you. But God is watching you. God is, God, God is watching them. He's watching you. What step are you taking? When the enemy is announcing that to you. Have you asked God to put iron, iron, iron yoke on their necks? Those people who have refused to serve God. Enemies does not serve God. Wicked people does not serve God. You can be with the wicked people, human beings, who have refused to serve God. There are some people who say they don't believe God, there is no God. Such a people, God will put the yoke, iron yoke on their neck. When they are planning to do evil against you, the Lord Almighty will yoke them. They will suffer, not you to suffer. Enough is enough. Give God permission to yoke your enemies. Because they have refused to serve the Lord, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. It doesn't mean that they don't know God. They have refused. They have rejected God. They don't want to hear anything about God. That's why you see even the, the, the laws that now even in schools, you, they, they, have abound, they, they have abolished the, 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 word in the, the word in the schools. There's no preaching. They, you can't pray in the, in the school. There's no CRE, the Bible study in the, in the schools. Because some people they have refused. They say, we don't need God. We don't, we don't, you, you can't even say, a lady was fired. When, when, they, when, he, when she was found that he was praying for a, a patient in the hospital. A woman was fired. A nurse was fired because she prayed for a patient in the hospital. And they, they found him. And they found her. Yeah? When the enemy has refused to serve the Lord, the Lord of our father Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of the, our, our Lord Jesus Christ, what do you do? Let God put a, a iron, iron yoke, iron yoke on their, their neck so that they cannot be able to rest up and damage you. When they are yoked, they cannot be able to do anything. They will be destroyed. And that is the hand of God. You are not doing anything. You are not taking the yoke and put it to the person. It is God who is going to put the yoke on the person, not you. Because in a spiritual realm, that's what they do. When God opens and sees how the devil is making people to cut the rod, some of them, they cut big rod as, as, as 100 kilos of sugar or rice. Even up to one, uh, 20, 200 pounds. You found somebody's carrying 200 pounds on the head like this. 
When, one time I was praying and I saw a lady. She was calling a huge a uh, uh, staff on the head like this a big one the woman was it was so heavy she was like this is her neck was going down like this because the thing was so heavy she could not even walk that's why you feel like you are carrying something heavy yeah that's when you feel sometimes you feel your body so heavy you can't even lift your hands because the enemy is holding your hands so tight or they are tightening something i was praying with a lady yesterday this lady, when I started praying, her, I saw her hands tied backward like this. So the woman is walking like this, like this, her hands is tied. Yeah, that's what the devil do. The devil tied you, tie you. So let him be ashamed and be disgraced and be, be rendered powerless. Because if he can manage to tie you like that, now nothing you are doing. Yeah, and, and you are watching, you are praying good prayers good prayers learn how to do spiritual warfare prayer break ask those yokes break that that rope the rope of the devil that is chaining you that is tying you ask the the fire of god to burn them to ashes in jesus name cut the chains that the enemy has chained you in a spiritual way that you know the the enemy chain your legs and your hands so you walk like this that's why your waist is is, is stuck you, your way is not clean. Everything is close. You try this, nothing. You can't go forward. Everything is shut because you are tied. Everything is tied. The enemy is busy planning wicked and evil because they have refused to serve the Lord. Then the Lord Almighty will put a yoke of iron on their neck and they will not and until they are destroyed. That's, the, that's how we serve the God. God cannot forgive enemy who have vowed that they will never repent. They have said by themselves that there is no God and we don't need God. We are okay without God. Let God stay away. Yeah? And God is the one who created him. And God is the one who gives him even the pretty breathed. He breathes. And then this enemy, the enemy of God says that we don't need him. God can discipline them terrible. They will be there is a, a yoke discipline that God will put on their necks that they will they will not able to rest up. Hallelujah! Praise be the name of Jesus. My God, I thank you. I have so much, but I have to stop here. I want to pray. I want to pray a prayer, uh, a prayer gun points, a prayer gun machine prayer. I want you to pray like this. Oh God, arise, put my enemies to shame with the rod of iron in the name of Jesus. Pray like this. Oh God, arise and put my enemies to shame with the, the, the rod of iron in the name of Jesus. Let, the, let God put your enemies shame with the, the rod of iron. The rod of iron it means R-O-D. Rod of iron. Oh God, arise. Put my enemy to shame with the rod of iron in the name of Jesus. If the Lord will put the enemies shame with the rod of iron, the rod of iron, the Lord of iron, my God, in the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, I thank you. I pray that God Almighty, God, 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 let God arise and put your enemies to, and put your enemies shame with the, with the rod of iron in Jesus name. I pray for you. I pray that God in the name of Jesus, God that we serve any plan, anything planted, anything planted, planted in your life by your enemies. I command them to come out with all their roots in the name of Jesus Christ. I pray that every, everything that enemy has planning against you, anything planted by enemies, anything that enemy is planning against you, I command them to be destroyed. I command every plans of the enemy because it's, it's saying that he will pursue you. He's planning wicked. When you go to work, because the enemy has planned that he's going to fire you, 
The enemy's planning is going to destroy you. The enemy's plan is, is going to take your marriage away. Let anything planted in your life by your enemies to come out and disgrace and be bound in Jesus' name. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Every power of public shame and disgrace against you, I command them to go back to the sender. Every public disgrace and shame against your life, against you, I command them to go back to the sender. Let the, your sender be disgraced and exposed in Jesus' name. You shall not be disgraced. You shall not be shamed in the name of Jesus. Because the scripture says, he who believes in the scripture will never be put to shame. Therefore, every shame the enemy wants to put to you, let it go back to the sender. Let it go back to the sender in Jesus' name. Generational disgrace and shame in your family, in your life, shall not stand in the name of Jesus. There is some family who have been disgraced and shamed. People, they don't respect this family. This family are rejected. They are disgraced. They are dis disgraced and dishonored. There is some family, generational family, that is, they, they, they are like that. Nobody recognizes them. Nobody, they are always rejected and disrespected and shamed. They are a generational like that. They are a family like that. Therefore, I command that generation of disgrace and shame in your life, in your family, shall be disgraced and be put to a shame. It shall not stand. You are a child of God. You don't care about those generational disgrace. You, Jesus Christ has washed you, has delivered you. You are a newborn. You are a newborn. You are a, you are a, you are a, you are born again Christian. Therefore, every generation of disgrace and shame in your life, they will not stand. They will go away in Jesus' name. You are not going to be uh, to be to be a pattern person of generational curses of generational thing. You are a different person. That's why you don't have to carry any sickness of, of your family. If your family has such a sickness or some problem, you don't have to carry them. You are a different person. You refuse them. You command them. It will not stand in my life. It will not cut even my children in Jesus' name. You refuse it. If your family, they are accepted the high blood pressure. They are accepted the diabetic. If your family, they accept uh, uh, cancer. But not you. Reject it. Refuse it in Jesus' name. Command them. They will not stand against you in Jesus' name. Any power that wants to disgrace you shall be disgraced in the name of Jesus. Any power want to disgrace you, any power want to disgrace you shall be disgraced in Jesus' name. Remember the enemy, the prayer of disap dis disappointed and disgraced in Jesus' name. Let your enemy be disgraced in the name of Jesus. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray that the Lord Almighty will disgrace your enemies and, is, and shame them in Jesus' name. They will be disgraced and disappointed in Jesus' name. They will be disappointed to death in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. My God, I want to thank you. I pray that any power that wants to disgrace you, that I will say that today I'm going to disgrace you, they are planned, they plan very well. They are waiting the time to disgrace you. Let them be disgraced in Jesus' name. By the power and the blood of Jesus Christ, you will not be disgraced in Jesus' name. Every arrow of public shame backfire to the sender. Go back to the sender. You know, the, the, the enemy will call the public and send arrows to public. There was a man. He, I saw here the, this man. He was in the, in the, in the CNA, CNA, CNN, NC, CNN. It was public shame and disgrace. He was confronted, but when I look at the man very carefully, I saw this was not true, but the enemy wanted to disgrace him in public. The enemy would plan to disgrace you in front of your children, in front of your family, in front of everybody. And these things, you, you have no idea, but they have planned that today we are going to disgrace so and so. We are going to ashamed the person. Let them go back to the center. Wherever plan disgrace, wherever planning to disgrace you, anything the enemy is planning against you, remember what the Exodus said. 
the the enemy says today i'm going to disgrace one so let it let it go back to the sender everything the enemy is planning against you let it go back to them in jesus name and every everyone people who are gathered together to gossip you speak evil against you even false witness you know even jesus christ the son of god there was false witness who witnessing falsely so that they they will find him guilty there are some wicked power some wicked people some wicked uh, personality who have decided to give false against you let them be put to a shame and disgrace in jesus name i i i renounce foundation shame in your life in jesus name every foundation of shame made in your life made against you be disgraced and be rendered powerless in jesus name yes lord we thank you father lord i glorify your name i thank you jesus you are worthy god loving father i i i thank you i give you all the glory jesus my god and my father in the name of jesus christ i pray i pray i pray i pray that god almighty anyone that is waiting for you for you to be shamed shall receive double shame and shall be put to shame in jesus name anyone that that is waiting for you to be, be to be ashamed that they are waiting for you to be to be ashamed to be to be ashamed they are waiting they are because they are calling each other they are saying come and see listen today we are going to disgrace to ashamed this person let them receive double shame and the shame be and shall put to them in the name of jesus christ let that shame wherever they are planning against you let it be put to them in jesus name this is spiritual warfare prayer and i'm praying without doubting without regret i am happy to pray for this this is not witchcraft prayer this is the truth of the mother there are some people some witchcraft some evil people they are waiting to put you to shame when they take your husband away when they take your children your children your daughter a pastor's daughter turned to a gay a pastor's daughter turned to, to a resume what do you think that is it what do you think is, is that i am not against the gay and the resume that is their choice but with with us christianity we don't allow that christianity a pastor's child turning herself or himself to be a resume what disgrace and shame is that as a child of, of god when your daughter is bringing her daughter to your house that this is my girlfriend this is my wife this is my husband when uh, i was dealing with that case i hear so much people crying when they call me a man called me crying tears saying mama christine People call me Mama Christine, call me Reverend, call me Prophetess, all the name where you, it is where you can call me. I am, I welcome you. This man, he's a man of God. In fact, he's a pastor. But he, because of shame and disgrace, he's now, he wants to resign. He wants to give up. He said, how is, how, how what am I going to say if my son, my own son, he said he's going to bring his boy, his man, his boyfriend, that he wants, this is his man, his, his, his husband. I'm a son of a pastor bringing a man home that this is a man he wants to marry. This man he wanted almost to commit suicide. I said, no, 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 no. This is the devil. Just pray against that. Pray. I gave him some prayer points to make that, that not to work, to function. Because shame is shame. We have to disgrace them. We have to refuse them. What will you say that the, the husband, your husband, is sleeping with your helper or your, 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 your girlfriend or your boyfriend? How do you feel? What shame is that? When you find a father sleeping with his own daughter, when you find a mother sleeping with his own, own son, what shame is that bringing to the family? And that is what we pray against them. 
the enemy will bring will plan shame and and plan very well shame that you go and do it and bring into the family let this shame be destroyed and be destroyed and go back to the center there's some powers programming against uh, programming things to happen to you it it it, it programmed the very well and death that it is going to happen i recover every wasted years of delay that is almost cause shame that the lord almighty all those years that that almost caused this shame those years, all the time you have been you have been going through shame. Let them die. Let them get out of your life in Jesus' name. Shame is a bad thing. It is not your will. It is not, it's not your will. You, you don't need this. Some people they do so wicked. A woman was telling me a story how the husband decided to bring an, a woman in, in the house where this woman is. And he said that I'm going to put this woman in shame to, to show her that she's nothing. She can, she's not a woman in this house. I don't want her anymore. Now, she brought the woman in the house. And this woman, they were kissing, they were loving each other, they were showing love because the woman, the, the, the vision, the little wife, she has no voice, she can't do anything. She's not working. She, she doesn't have anything. This man is the one who will provide everything to, it, to him, to her. But because the man has changed his mind, he doesn't want this woman. So the man is doing wicked and evil against the, his own wife. And now the wife was so sad, was crying, was, and the man was beating this wife, his wife. And he brings a woman in the house in front of the wife. Because the wife cannot do anything. So the wife, she told me that, I said, that is easy. Are you still in that house? The woman said, yes, they have not kicked me out. What you will do, I will pray for the oil, go and anoint the bed, the room, and everything in that house, and speak the word of God. It will be accomplished. Speak. That shame they are bringing to you shall go and, and be disgraced. They will be disgraced and shame will, will fall upon them. The woman, I prayed here. Here, here where I am. I prayed for the oil. And I put all the words that I know. Now this woman, she went and anointed the bed, anointed the house everywhere. That oil is so powerful that the people of God, you need, if you have, if you have, not, if you have not prayed for your oil, go and buy your oil and call me and pray for your oil. The woman went and prayed and, and anointed the house as I told her. And I gave her prayers, what to say. She started praying those prayers. And then the man, he came back with the, the same woman. And then this woman, what happened? When the woman entered in the house, they started fighting with the man. <laughs> and then the man, the woman overpowers the man. And beat this man, beat this man, beat the man almost to death. And the wife was, was looking from distance. Then the man started calling the wife, please help me. Please, the, man, the wife called the, 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 the police. The wife called the police. And these things happen here in the States, not far. <laughs> but because the woman would not call the police for the, for, 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 for the husband, now the woman called the, the police because they were fighting. And it is a true story. A true story, I'm telling you. Now, after this woman, when they called the police, and the police came and found this man, the, 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 the strange woman, has beat, has, has beat this husband, the man, the man is bleeding. Now the, the woman was arrested. You see, shame and disgrace fall upon them. And then the police ask, who is the husband? Who is the wife? This And then what is this? What would happen, you know? Shame. Shame. Big shame. Yeah? Shame. And these people, they went to court and they fight themselves. The man fight himself. The wife fight for himself. So now this was shame. The shame go back to the sender. 
But the woman, because he loves his husband, and they said, and she said that that was my husband, and it is me who caused this. So I will have my husband back. I don't mind, I don't care. The woman was put in jail because that is criminal. And the woman got his husband back. That's how it is. Shame. The enemy wants to bring shame on you. Bringing a, 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 a woman in, the, in your house to disgrace you and, and put shame on you. But if you know how to pray the prayer of spiritual warfare, you don't have to fight. You don't have to show anything. You just pray. The shame will go back to their heart very bad in a big way that they will never regret. They will never, never, never forget. That, that, that woman in jail, she will never forget what she did to this other woman. Even the husband would never, and she would never, and the husband would never go to another woman again. Yeah. It was exposed and disgraced. Everybody, neighbors, everybody, they just come and to see what happened. That's how the disgrace and exposed was. That's that why I said, let your enemy be disappointed and disgraced. Now this woman, she was happy proudly that she's disgracing, disrespecting the other woman. At the end, she was disgraced and put to jail and served there in prison. That's how the enemy would do. That's, that's how the enemy would do to disgrace you, but you would disgrace him to death. And you recover everything the enemy has been disgracing you. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, women of God, children of God, if you know Somebody stealing your husband. You are you are the first wife. You are, you are a woman who married, officially married. Let me know. I will help you. There is a way to solve this. You cannot be, be disgraced, be put to your shame. You are not ready to go to look for another husband or for another wife. And you have already got, have one. People, they don't have a husband. People, they don't have wives. And you, you have one, then the enemy wants to take your wife or your husband. You don't allow that. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus. God, I thank you. I thank you, Jesus. I give you all the glory, God. I magnify to your name. I bless your name. I thank you, Father. Disgrace the enemies. Disgrace every plans of the enemy. Disappoint them in the name of Jesus. My father and my father, I decree that all those who have been fighting against you will begin to defeat and favor you in now in Jesus' name. I pray that God Almighty, by the power in the blood of Jesus, the power that created heaven and earth, let God arise. Lord Almighty, God of Araja, arise and, and bring favor to your life in Jesus' name. And they cover you. Every shame you have suffered, let God cover you in Jesus' name. Every shame, disgrace that you have been you have been receiving, let God Almighty cover you. Let the mass of God cover you. God, let God clothe you with His garment that will take away shame, that will take away tears, that will take away disgrace in Jesus' name. Let God Almighty cover you with his garment so that you've been suffered a lot so that you can no more cry again in jesus name my father and my god in the name of jesus when the enemy take away your job you have no job you've been looking for a job for so long and the enemy is happy celebrating rejoicing that they have taken your job let god almighty my father cover you with his garment of shame and disgrace and let the joy of the lord fall upon you in jesus name my god and my father i want to thank you lord i praise your name god i pray that god almighty cover you let god cover you let god cover you with his garment let god cover you from shame and disgrace in the mighty name of jesus let god put you a garment of of of, of glory a garment of of salvation that will cover you in the name of jesus when the enemy has put you the garment of shame let god put you a garment a garment of celebration a garment of joy in the name of jesus christ my god my father 
In the name of Jesus, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I bless you. I pray for those who have been crying. I pray for those who have been disgraced. I pray for those who have been put to shame. Those who have been, been so much disgraced. Lord, my Father, deliver them. Deliver them, my God, my Father, in the name of Jesus. You have been cried enough. Enough is enough. It's your time to rejoice in Jesus' name. My God, I bring your people to you, God, my Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Pr protect them, God, my Father and my God. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. Amen. I have to stop here. Go to our website www.overcomersdhministry.blogspot.ca There are prayers of yesterday. Even this one, I'm going to post them. When you go to the sermons, you will, you will see these prayers. They are there. So you look there, you will, you will help yourself to pray. It will deliver you, it will help you. So that you never be put to a shame. The scripture says in Romans 10 verse 11. He who believes in the scripture would never be put to shame. Claim that scripture. No shame more. There will be no shame. Enough is enough. The book of Romans. Claim that. Let your enemy be disappointed and be put to a shame in Jesus name. Remember the book of Romans. You can meditate that, 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 that scripture. You say, I will not be put to a shame. I believe the scriptures. Anything want to put me into shame. Let them be disgraced and ashamed. Let them be disappointed in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes. Hallelujah. Praise be the name of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, For the scripture said, Whosoever believed on him shall never be put to shame. You will never be, if you believe in him, if the scripture says, whoever believe in him, you will never be put to shame. You will, Jesus will never let you to be put to shame. Anything that wants to put you to shame, they will be disgraced and be exposed in Jesus' name. I pray that I will never be put to shame. Nothing will put me to shame. I declare because the scripture is against that. Therefore, I refuse to be shamed. I refuse to be ashamed in the name of Jesus. I have refused. You say like that. Don't let the enemy to put you to shame. Then you become like this. You start crying. You start mourning. Say enough is enough. No more. My tears, I will cry when God has bring me good things. I will cry when I have victory. I'm crying to say thank you, Jesus. The, the cry of joy. Not the cry of what the devil is doing to you. Not the cry that the devil has made you sad. You will be crying the tears of joy that Jesus has done to you this. Not you to give the enemy your tears. Hallelujah. We have the numbers. If you want me to pray for you, especially if you need me to pray for your anointing oil, buy anointing, buy olive oil, buy olive oil and bring it to me. Call me, I will pray for you. That prayer, that oil is power. There is power in that oil. Olive oil. I think I'm going to start a campaign, a, a prayer for olive oil. We will be using olive oil for seven days, prayer and fasting. Yes. God willing, treasure, or my dear sister Deborah, please remind me. I need somebody to remind me because I, I talk and I, I, I forgot. So remind me to teach about the, the, the olive oil, anointing oil. For seven days, Pray and fasting. Thank you very much, my sister. God bless you so much. Oh, Mississippi. Thank you, my sister, Jackson. Is this the Jackson? Okay. Thank you, thank you so much. Call me. My number, our number, is 905-487-7196. 905-487-7196. If you want to call us for, for me to pray for you, to stand with you, this is the number you can call. Our website, once again, all the information are there in our website. And you can also call us in our, tech, our, our cell phone number. Yes, that's the one. 905-487-7196.
and our cell phone number is 647-608-5207. You can reach us through text message, email. Our email address is overcomers dhm at gmail.com when you call us you can reach us you text us you can reach us so there is no way that you cannot reach us if you try the phone is engaged or the phone is not going through you can email us or text us so god bless you so much have a wonderful time people of god and these videos will come up within next 15 minutes so if you want to view it again god bless you Thank you so much. God bless you so much. Have a wonderful time, people of God. Amen. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.